All right, guys, I'm really excited about today's content because I get to unveil to the world a brand new speed part for the 8.1 platform, something that's been in development for a couple of years now. And outside the creators, nobody has actually ever seen this before. So like I said, I'm really excited to be able to unveil this brand new part with you guys. And we're even going to be using it on our own 8.1 build. Now, my name's LT. On this channel, we build custom and high-performance trucks. I think probably my favorite personal build is the Ugly Truck, which is an 8.1 powered turbocharged Silverado 1500. And we're in the process of building a bulletproof engine for that thing. We've got a forged rotating assembly on the way. I have a second 8.1 block right there, and that will all get dropped off to the machine shop so I can get the second motor built while the first one is still in the truck. Because I got a few more races coming up this year. We do have a new torque converter on the way for the 8.1. So we got some more racing to do this year, but I also want to have the new motor built. So probably by the time next spring rolls around and we're ready to start racing again, uh, my goal is a thousand horsepower and that's what I want to make. So uh, stay tuned for all that, guys. Before we get to this brand new speed part that's sitting like right behind me, I do want to give you guys a quick update on this F-150 project. This is a white 93 Ford and you guys have probably seen it on the channel a little bit. And we are so close to the finish line but it's just one of those deals where it takes a lot of time to finish all the little details and most of it is in the wiring. And I just finished up basically every last wire on this truck. I haven't done the final wrap on the harness just because I wanted to do a test. And last night I actually did do the very first test drive. I got it out on the street. I rode it through the gears. This Ford is working great. So now basically I have two things left to do. Number one, I have to get the wire harness completely wrapped, but luckily when I built the harness, I made it removable. So pull it out of the truck, wrap it up. I do have some uh, shielding tape that I picked up. I'm actually going to put over the uh, pickup wires from the distributor just so there's no magnetic interference or whatever. Uh, and the second thing I've got to do is put the larger fuel pump in the tank in the back of the truck. This is a one pump or oh, sorry, a one tank truck. So there's only one pump to have to deal with. That makes life a lot simpler. Um, so under the hood, pretty much everything looks the same as you guys saw it last time with the exception of a few connectors that go through that firewall plate right there, which is probably impossible to see now, but I made a weather pack connector. And the big difference is on the inside of the truck and underneath. I got the TCM from US Shift all wired up. I built a little bracket. You're not supposed to mount these under the hood. There's a little screen on there and stuff. So I just built a bracket to mount it right underneath the dashboard there. The Holly screen, I'm just going to kind of stick right about there. And that's the only difference on the inside of the truck. AC works, every single gauge works, speedometer works, tachometer, water temp, fuel pressure, or, or fuel level, there's no fuel pressure gauge in here, uh, oil pressure, and so on. Anyhow, that's kind of the update on this truck. Like I said, probably next week sometime, I'm going to take it out and do sort of a review video for you guys just to see what it's like. We've got a 500 horsepower Windsor. We have an E4 OD automatic. It's a short bed truck. It's fairly lightweight. So it should be a lot of fun to kind of scoot around. So now onto the new part. Much like a lot of other truck engines that were designed to make a lot of torque at a low engine speed, the 8.1 suffers from an airflow restriction at higher engine speeds. Now, if you want to make more horsepower, you do need more airflow. So anytime you can eliminate an airflow restriction, you automatically gain more horsepower. Now, the 8.1, there's a few areas that you can upgrade. And the first thing most people do is usually put in a higher lift and higher duration camshaft, which basically keeps the intake and exhaust valves open further and for a longer amount of time, which lets in more air. Now, that's great. People have been doing cam swaps forever. But the next restriction on the 8.1 that a lot of guys have had to deal with is the cylinder heads. The stock heads just are basically garbage. Um, so there's been an aftermarket set available for a very long time, Raylar Engineering. They've developed some aluminum heads, which number one, are much lighter than those big factory cast iron heads. But number two, they flow a huge amount of air over the stock heads. And after you replace the cylinder heads, the next biggest restriction is the intake manifold. And until today, actually, there haven't been many great options for 8.1 intakes, especially if you have a 8.1 truck application. I know in boats, you have a lot more room, you know, over the, I don't know what they call the hood thing on a boat, but you have a lot more room under the hood of a boat to put a big intake on there. And Dart does make a carbureted intake available for the 8.1. Uh, but in a truck, that's just not really a great option, in my opinion, um, for several different reasons. But Raylar actually has now a brand new intake manifold for the 8.1 stuff and it'll be a direct replacement in a truck. It'll automatically gain you about another 30 to 40 horsepower in a basically stock application just because of all the restrictions that it eliminates. 
Um, so without further ado, here is the brand new Raylar intake manifold for the 8.1 platform. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is this one is actually plastic. That's because this is the second prototype version. The first prototype is actually looks just like this. Um, and Larry's been running that one on his personal Corvette for about a year that he does have a Corvette with an 8.1 that's been swapped under the hood. Um, and this is basically, I'm calling it like a stock replacement simply because of how everything attaches. Now it's obviously gonna perform much better, uh, but we have the same front facing throttle body at the same angle as stock. Although this one does have, instead of a 72 millimeter opening, it has a 90 millimeter opening and it does have a four bolt flange for most popular aftermarket throttle bodies. Has the stock port right here for the oil fill. It accepts stock injectors and stock fuel rails. It has the EVAP port right here on the front so you can keep your emission stuff in place. Has the stock manifold pressure sensor port right there. So basically this thing will bolt right on, accept all of your existing sensors, no custom work required, and it'll get you automatically about another 30 to 40 horse on a stock setup. Now, if you have a modified intake manifold where they cut the 8.1 intake open and they remove that little baffle, uh, this will still gain you about another 15 to 20 horsepower, once again, on a stockish application. But if you have a stroker engine, if you have better cylinder heads, higher compression, and a higher RPM range than stock, this manifold, the gains are going to be way, way bigger than a stock intake, simply because of how much more airflow it's going to have available. Now, in terms of runner length, the stock runner on an 8.1 is, I believe, 19 inches, and they designed this one with a 14-inch runner. And they tried several different combinations when they were developing this, and a 14-inch runner provides the best combination of low RPM torque and high RPM horsepower. They tried a few shorter runners, but torque would just fall off, and they tried some longer runners, and then you just have a restriction on the upper side. So basically, with this runner length, about 14 inches, that's the best combination that they found. It'll support RPMs about up to about 6,800, which is probably a little bit higher than where I'm going to take my engine, but I'm really, really excited for the rest of my parts to show up. I am working with Raylar for the rest of my 8.1 build. Um, and we're going to put this manifold to the test and we're going to see exactly how much power it's going to make. Now, I think I've probably outlined my overall plan for my 8.1 build for you guys, but this is a spare block I have right here. Um, and as soon as the pistons, rods, and crank come in, I'm going to drop everything off to the machine shop and then I'll have all the machine work done. I'll assemble it here myself. Um, it's going to be, I think, 518 cubic inches. So it's up from the 496. Uh, and everything will be forged so it's a lot stronger and it'll hold up to all the boost that I want to throw at it. And my final goal, 1,000 horsepower. And hopefully by next spring, by the time drag strips open back up after the winter, um, we're going to go back to the track with a 1,000 horsepower Silverado with 400, 518 cubic inches. So I think that's really, really awesome. Now, uh, if you guys want to learn more about this intake manifold, check out Raylar Engineering's website. I'm not sure if they have it up there yet or not. But the biggest challenge right now for those guys is the production, is the casting of these things, because the final version that you'll be able to buy is going to be made from cast aluminum. And they're working with several different foundries, but just with the COVID stuff going on, they've said the production delays have been just pretty substantial. So check out their website. I'll link it in the description, raylarengineering.com. They have a bunch of really cool stuff. If you want to take your 8.1 to the next level, whether that's a stroker, you can go up to 540 cubic inches, you know, different heads, camshafts, and all that good stuff that we'll be using on our 8.1 build. Uh, I do want to say thank you guys for watching. This upload is going to be pretty quick. Um, I've been mostly focusing on this Ford, just trying to get it done because I want it out of my hair. It's a cool project and I'm really glad I was able to do it, but it's kind of dragged out for a little while now. And I want to get back to my step side because I've got a bunch of parts that I've ordered that are on the way. I mentioned we're doing kind of a budget build at first and my idea or some of my ideas kind of are what I've got listed out there. So that's the plan for the step side. You guys know about the ugly truck, the Turbo 8 one. We got some cool stuff happening there as well. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. We're trying to reach 100,000 subs by the end of this year. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this really cool intake manifold. And finally, click the like button. All that stuff helps this channel grow. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time.